what is up guys, it's me Zach Lee and welcome to day 44 of the 2017-2018 NBA season. Let's just get into everything that went down yesterday in the NBA. Lego. I wish I knew exactly when I made that video where I said this was a possible thing that could happen. This was like back when the season first ended, when the off season first began. I said LeBron James very well could end up wearing a Philadelphia 76ers jersey at the start of the 2018-2019 NBA season. He might take his talents to Philly to play with Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. It made sense if the Sixers proved to be as good as the hype around them was and they proved that they could win games and stay healthy, then you could count on them to be one of the front runners to land LeBron if he decides to leave Cleveland. Now some people did see my vision and saw what I was talking about, so I'm not gonna say that everyone was calling me crazy because they weren't, but then there were some people who were saying that it won't and it can happen. Yo, why would the Sixers ever want LeBron since they already have Ben Simmons and their play styles are kind of similar? First off, those are the people who are probably saying that Chris Paul and James Harden couldn't coexist on the same team, but more on that later in this video. And second off, it's freaking LeBron James. If you think your team has a legit shot at landing him in the offseason, you will go after him in the offseason. End of story. And in that video, I went in depth talking about why it would benefit LeBron to take his talents to Philly, saying that he wouldn't have to do as much because he would have Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, and that it could also help extend his dominance in the NBA because he would have Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid on his team. It all makes sense and apparently it does make sense to the Sixers now too because yesterday a report came out saying that the Sixers are going to be extremely interested in going after LeBron James this offseason if he does decide to leave the Cleveland Cavaliers. The whole thing about LeBron leaving Cleveland though is still something that no one can be 100% sure of. No one has any idea of what LeBron is going to do. So I'm not going to sit up here and say that he could leave or stay depending on any number of things that could happen. Happen. But I'm just saying this, LeBron James to the Philadelphia 76ers is turning out to be more than just a pipe dream of diehard Sixers fans. That being said though, even if the Sixers don't get LeBron next year, they will still be fine in the long run if they continue to stay healthy because they have Simmons and Embiid. And we still have to see what Fultz can do too. Ben Simmons though. You know teams are scared of you when they have to stoop to one of the lowest tactics that teams can stoop to in order to try and stop you. You guys remember when LeBron James was a rookie and teams started to intentionally follow him because that was one of the only ways you could try to stop him was by setting him to the free throw line? Well, yeah, the same thing happened to Ben Simmons last night for the first time too. As after the Wizards actually fall back and cut what was once a 22 point lead down to almost nothing at all, they resorted to fouling Ben Simmons and sending him to the free throw line a ridiculous 24 times in the fourth quarter. That's NBA record for most free throw attempts in a quarter. And with this 29 attempts on the night, of course, Ben Simmons also has the record for most free throws attempted by a rookie in a single game. That being said though, at first the strategy was kind of working. He started off by only making nine of his first 16 attempts, but let's be real here. Whenever a player, or at least most players, shoot that many free throws, they're bound to get into a groove. And that's exactly what Simmons did as he hit six of his last eight free throws to ice the game and get Philly the 118 to 113 win over Washington. Simmons finished with a game high 31 points because he shot so many free throws, but also had a career high 18 rebounds as well. And I just absolutely hate the hack a shack tactic. It just zaps all the life out of games. James Harden and Chris Paul can't play on the same team. They both need the ball in their hands. Chris Paul is going to hurt James Harden's game. No way Harden wins MVP with Chris Paul. Chris Paul doesn't add anything to the Rockets. Time and time again, that is what people said about the Rockets after they traded for Chris Paul. People thought that it would be a train wreck. It wouldn't work out. However, now that it is working out and everything doubters had to say about this team has been proved wrong so far, it's dirty silent when it comes to talking about the Rockets. Now people just act like the Rockets ain't even a team or something. They won again yesterday, 118 to 97 over the Indiana Pacers while also playing some pretty good basketball. Chris Paul has played, I believe, five or six games for the Rockets so far, and the Rockets haven't lost a single one of those games yet. Their offense is off the charts, which is scary because Mike D'Antoni said that he hasn't even found a way to fully incorporate CP3 in the offense yet, and Chris Paul is still averaging a league-best 10.3 assists per game, and James Harden is right behind him with 9.8 per game. And it's not even just their offense. Houston, yes, this Hayne Houston 
one team that has been notorious for playing almost no defense these past few years is one of the best defensive teams in the NBA so far this year too. They're winning games by an average of 10.8 points. First in the league, even over Golden State. Like most of the games they won aren't even close. Won by 21 yesterday. 14 a couple days ago, 15 before that against the Knicks, beat Denver by 30 before that, and before that it was Memphis by 22. I could go on and on. They are 12 and one in their last 13 games. And get this, only one of those wins was by a single digit margin, and that was a 117 to 113 win over Cleveland, which was the only games the Cavs have lost in their last 10 games. Other than that, it's literally been blowout after blowout after blowout. Look, I don't even know what else there is to say. Harden has been absolutely absurd so far this year. Chris Paul looks like he was born to play with this Rockets team, and Clint Capella has been playing really well as well. All the other players on the Rockets have been playing really well. But if you guys still want to doubt this team, then hey, that's on you because... I'm woke. This is the Brandon Ingram that I want to see more of. He shows what he is capable of some games, but he just doesn't always play with that edge or that aggression that he needs. I know this guy is capable of scoring the ball like this more often, and when he does, he just makes the Lakers so much of a better team. That being said, I don't want to compare him to KD or any other player because that's putting a heck of a lot of pressure on him, and I just think he should become who he is, but Ingram going off for 32 points last night and looking kind of like Haiti was almost too much for the Golden State Warriors to handle as in order to prevent themselves from losing their third straight game, it took the Warriors overtime to dispatch of the young Lakers. And this was just a really good game throughout after the shakiest first quarter from LA. Uh, this was also the first matchup between Lonzo Ball and Stephen Curry. LaVar said Lonzo was better than Curry, but no one alive actually believes that right now. Lonzo did hold his own last night though. He played really well. 15 points and 10 assists. The kid is going to be just fine. Give him time. Curry though started off this game kind of rough. Couldn't hit many shots but when the Warriors needed him the most he stepped up big time. Scoring 13 points in overtime. 28 in the game and 127 to 123 was the final score and this was just the first of what could be many great games between these two teams in the future. I thought about dedicating a part of this video to talking about the Thunder last night but when I woke up this morning I just realized there ain't nothing else to say. Everything has already been said. Everyone knows the problems that this team has. They talk about fixing it all the time yet every night is the same exact thing nothing changes i made an excuse for them the last time when they lost to dallas saying it was because their third game in four nights some people might say tonight it was just because aaron gordon going off for 40 points and 15 rebounds really great game and all credit to him but one guy scoring a bunch doesn't excuse the thunder from losing to the orlando magic a team that had only won twice in their last 13 games before last night 121 to 108 was the final score. I got a feeling Kawhi is next. He's about to get the first ejection of his career sometime this year. First it was LeBron getting his first ejection and now yesterday Anthony Davis just received his. In the second quarter, after AD came up empty in the post against Towns, Davis thought he was fouled and a whistle could have blown for sure. It didn't and he let the ref hear about it. To be honest, he went at that ref a lot more aggressively than LeBron did when he was ejected, but he just got away with the one tech and was kind of calmed down by DeMarcus Cousins of all people. The very next play though, you could tell that something bad was about to happen. Even though play resumed, you could just watch this and see the steam still fuming from Anthony Davis. The Wolves went to Towns in the post. He drew the foul, whistle blows, AD snaps, ref ejects him, and AD looked like he was ready to risk it all to get a couple of shots in on that ref. And after Davis was tossed, this game just went overwhelmingly in favor of Minnesota as the Pelicans could no longer keep up offensively without one of their biggest threats. 120 to 102 was the final score and leave it to Cousins to use this platform of his teammate getting ejected to voice some of his frustrations with the officials. We rarely see AD get that angry on the court. I mean, what do you think was kind of the root of that, that frustration? Yeah, so it's, it's obvious, man. It's a joke, man. It's a, it's a complete joke. You saw it. I don't have to, I don't have to speak on you saw it. And, I, and what I don't understand is, um, you know, players are punished for playing off their emotions and showing their emotions in the game, whatever the case may be. But, you know, other people are allowed to, and it's totally fine. It's okay to 
you know, coach off of emotions. It's, it's okay to judge a game off of emotions. And it's both. Cousins has been doing a much better job with the refs so far this year. Clearly, he still doesn't like them, but he has been able to hide it better when on the court. Hopefully, for the Pelicans' sake, this incident, though, doesn't bring back the old book. First quarter, it almost got as bad as it can get for the New York Knicks, as Porzingis went down with what appeared to be at the time, a very nasty ankle injury. He left the game and did not return, but after the game, he said he was fine and thought he could have came back. And the Knicks kind of rallied around Porzingis going down to come away with the blow 115 to 86 win over the Hassan Whiteside list Miami Heat. And his Cantor returned for New York after missing his last three games with back spasms and posted up 22 points and 14 rebounds. Kemba Walker. Had to sit this one out due to a bruised left shoulder. So getting a win in Toronto for the Hornets would be nearly impossible last night. And it just didn't happen because, yeah, they lost. 126 to 113, the final score, despite Dwight Howard making one of the most impressive moves and posters that he has made in the post for quite some time yesterday. DeRozan and Lowry, though, have been off to a very up and down start so far this year, trying to learn this new system that Dwayne Casey has them running, but they are getting more and more comfortable with it every single day. Yesterday, they looked more comfortable than ever as they each notched over 30 points as well as six assists apiece. Seemed like there was a game within the game between those two guys to see who could have the better game. Lara, I think, won this one though, as he had 36 points on eight of 11 shooting from three. Firing Fisdale didn't get the Grizzlies a win last night. Night. And Memphis also released a statement saying that they are not going to be trading either Mike Conley or Mark Gasol this year. Look, to each their own, I still personally think it's time for Memphis to hit the restart button, but hey, uh, they got Chandler Parsons, so I guess they're good. Uh, 104 to 95 was the final score. San Antonio with another Kawhi Leonardless victory because of the rejuvenated Lamarcus Aldridge having a vintage Aldridge night last night as he poured in 41 points on the game. I think Phoenix is just like everyone's favorite team to play against because every team looks like the freaking Golden State Warriors of the Houston Rockets when they play them. Even I had to acknowledge that the Pistons probably scored an extra 20 to 30 points last night because they went against Phoenix. Um, but hey, they went out there and did what they were supposed to do, so I have no complaints. Six players scored in double digits, and all but one player on the roster scored last night for the Pistons as they get the 131 to 107 win over the Suns. The Nets might not have been that bad this year if not for Jeremy Lin and D'Angelo Russell getting injured. So the Cavs should kind of feel fortunate that it did happen, so their pick might be a little more valuable. But still, it's looking like that pick is going to be like 7th, 8th, or ninth at best unless the Cavs somehow get some more of that amazing lottery luck that they have had in the past and to be honest I don't think I would bet against that happening this year either. The Nets though won yesterday 109 to 104 over the Mavericks behind Mark Carroll and his 22 points and Spencer Dinwiddie's 19 while Harrison Barnes had 17 for Dallas. That wraps up all the action from last night though. You guys can go vote for the player of the day by following the link down in the description box below. Just remember the only players whose team won are eligible to win player of the day. And yesterday you guys selected Kevin Love and his 38 points and nine rebounds as your player of the day. But thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like on this video as well as subscribe to the channel for more daily NBA news and highlights. But until tomorrow, keep getting the buckets, Team SDC, and I'm out of here.